Hello, I'm Joe Dillette. This video is about doing an acanthus leaf design on a newel post. And uh, I've got a few uh, uh, drawing tips to give you, and uh, uh, I'd like to show you that. The uh, First of all, the acanthus design is used quite often in architecture. The um, other leaves that you find is the oak and the grape leaf and uh, the oak leaf is, uh, here, let's just do a kind of a layout of an oak leaf here. And an oak leaf, you have some freedom with it, but not quite as much freedom as an acanthus leaf. So an oak leaf, and there's a lot of different designs in oak leaf, but it's relatively... Um, uniform and structured. The same with a grape leaf. A grape leaf, if you have, um, say we've got five lobes on a grape leaf, and um, So these designs are uh, found quite often in architecture, but most commonly you will find the acanthus. The acanthus you have more freedom, and you can fit it in almost uh, any space. The acanthus, we just start off with our lobe, is a much fuller leaf. And you see a lot of variations of it. The uh, points can be just about anything that you want on it. It's a fuller leaf, very full. And artists take a lot of freedom with these uh, leaves. What they will do is the acanthus leaf has the points going all the way down. They will smooth that off. They will curl the leaf, bend the top. Uh, you will find it fit into almost any area. And the acanthus leaf has really got a, a, a lot of creative possibilities. So uh, that's uh, what we're putting on here. And we have a round object, uh, the newel post. And how we're doing the layout on the object is we first of all have to get it spaced evenly going around. So what I do is I use a strip and I will wrap that strip around and I'll take the strip going around and then I will take it off and measure it and uh, divide it up. So um, we just finished the acanthus leaf here on the bottom and uh, I've got some reference points, which is the vine going up the center of the acanthus leaf. I drew one side, and uh, then to draw the other images, I made up, uh, this is a, a 
vellum, which is uh, like tracing paper, and um, I trace that image, and now I can line it up on the next reference point, and so I get it pretty symmetrical going all the way around. Uh, to transfer that image under the tracing paper, I use this carbon paper. The carbon paper is not greasy, it's actually uh, uh, carbon like a pencil, and it doesn't smear, and uh, uh, so that works very well. The uh, carbon paper that like you use for typing and that in the office supplies is a uh, kind of a grease base and that will smear on here and that'll stain the wood. But this is true carbon paper that you can get at uh, any good craft store uh, and uh, like Michael's or a place like that or Blick. And, uh, so that's used uh, because it doesn't smear and stain the wood. So if we have, uh, I have to put another acanthus design up here. So what I do is I'm going to divide that up into eight segments because I want eight lobes sticking out. So I will wrap it around, tape the end, coming around here. Okay, then what I do is I'll just mark where they overlap, and that will give me the circumference. Now all I need to do is just measure that circumference, divide it into eight, and put my marks on it. I'm going to use the, uh, that for one side. The other side is going to be the smaller side. and. Um, so let me wrap that around, and I will mark that also, divide that into eight. Now on the top part, it's not going to be wrapped. The bottom is wrapped one leaf goes halfway around and uh, so I'm starting off I've got four stems on the bottom and I'm going up to eight tops so these are going to be bumps that are raised out of the uh, of the wood and uh, so there will be eight of them going around. I'm going to line up the eight with uh, the lobes here and these are going to be straight and it will be just the top of the leaf this here top part of the leaf right here that'll be rolled over and a little bit of the side leaf too so that the stem will run up and it'll be curved over so there's going to be uh, eight lobes going around the top well we have the design drawn on uh, with this large hunk of hickory it doesn't take much to hold it down, so um, it's pretty heavy to start with, so I'm just going to put a couple clamps on it. And that will hold it from moving around. Being hickory, we need a mallet to push the chisel through. Hickory carves very nice. So the first thing that I'm doing is um, doing the stop cuts. I'll move the camera in to show you the detail. This is the high part of the wood. So uh, to go with the grain, we're coming down in this direction. because the end grain is coming out and we are cutting it off like that. At the high point then we're coming down in the other direction. Now one of the things the newel post uh, gets a lot of wear. Uh, it's in a traffic area where the uh, it gets bumped a lot 
uh, people are brushing against it, the uh, cleaning of it, uh, uh, they have to be able to dust. So the thing that you don't want to do is make very delicate um, uh, areas that can break off. So you have to kind of imagine that they're moving furniture up and down the steps and they're going to bump this over the years. Uh, it's hickory, it's not going to dent, but what it does do is it chips off fairly easily. So we have to be careful of that. So the designs are going with the grain where the grain is short, we try to keep it uh, wide so it gives it some strength for the cleaning. So we're using uh, tool specific carving. This radius on this chisel uh, just fits the curve that I'm trying to make right here and as the leaf is rolling over. The other chisel that I'm using is a nice curve on this one uh, that follows some of the of these curves here making the stop cuts like so. One of the things to be mindful of is the direction of the grain. Because of the turn piece here, the grain, this is all in grain here, it's in grain here sticking out. So you have to change directions. You're coming down to the low part and then you have to work down to the low part on this side. Uh, so, because uh, that is how the grain is coming. Uh, if you try to go in there, it's going to chip coming in. One of the things with this uh, hickory that it's kiln dried and being kiln dried is uh, makes it a little bit more prone to splitting. Hickory is a hardwood and the uh, uh, wood tends to split a little bit more. So when you're coming down driving a chisel in, let's say underneath here, and uh, this part here is off, you could easily split this out because you're driving a wedge in over here and if there's wood on the other side it's going to cause pressure on both sides and the kiln dried hickory is more prone to splitting than air dried hickory is. So you have to be mindful of that. One of the things that I did for the tool specific carving is this edge here I'm trying to maintain a very nice sharp edge so I'm using uh, that's a straight line so I'm using a number one chisel which is a straight chisel and I drive it in as at a 45 to make that stop cut I don't drive it in straight because again I might take a chance on splitting this so I uh, one of the things you don't want to do is have to use any glue in this uh, hickory, actually any carving, but it's, uh, a hickory, that this is going to be stained and uh, any glue on there would uh, stain differently. So uh, now I made the stop cuts here with it's a number uh, four gouge, uh, fishtail gouge, and that just following this curve coming up. I'm not driving it in very hard, just getting it into the surface, and that's my stop cuts, so I can start taking down the stock here in the middle. Another way to make the stop cuts is with the V-tool. So what I'm doing is I'm going to protect this leaf here. So I'm going to come around with the V-tool. Be 
because I'm going down to the lower portion. Now if I was to come up, I'd be driving into the end grain so I can come around this way. So that's another way to make the stop cuts. Even here, rather than doing a plunge cut, I can use the V-tool. Makes it a little cleaner. Now I can use the straight part of the V-tool as the chisel to level off the stock in between. This hickory is not a bad carving wood. It is hard, but you're using a mallet to, uh, for the power to drive it through. You're not trying to push by hand. In the finishing process, uh, when I'm going to start eliminating some of my uh, chisel marks, uh, then I will be pushing the chisel through to eliminate some of the marks. But the customer wants this to look hand carved and uh, he wants some chisel marks uh, of left into it. So not the type of chisel marks that would uh, uh, disrupt the design, but uh, it'll be along the flow of the leaf, the chisel marks, to enhance the carving. These architectural carvings are available from places like Inkenbold, and they uh, are uh, machine done. They have the, the router, and when the router comes in and they're making a cut down the vein, it's all the same width, the same depth, and uh, no real gradual transition out into the leaf. And the customer did not want that. Uh, they were uh, emphatic about getting it hand carved. So we're just in the roughing stage. What I'm doing is I'm just trying to define the shape of the leaf and uh, just some of the contours. I want to kind of get these uh, uh, knobs to where the leaf is rolled over at the top. Uh, start defining them and go all the way around to do that before I start doing the detail on it. Here is a tip of a leaf right here. The same with this one here. Uh, to be careful not to split that out because the, the grain is short right here. Uh, when you're carving that, you always have to go into the strength of the wood. So in other words, come this direction. If you were to come out this direction, you would blow that tip right off. So always drive back into the strength of the wood. So these are the stop cuts I'm making now with the V-tool. Just trying to outline the, you see how the wood splits so easily. I have to be careful when I'm coming down that I don't go and split this out here. So I have to do a, a stop cut there on the bottom and uh, that will keep it from splitting out when I get down there. So then that chip just falls out. Um, at the top here, we're right at the peak. So now the grain is sticking out here. So this was in grain coming this way. Now right at this point, it's, it's transitioned and the in grain is on this side. So I need to come down. And again, this point that's right here right at that point. If I was to come out this direction, I would blow that point right off, so I need to drive back 
into the strength. Now I don't need a stop cut there because the grain is going this way and naturally the chip is just going to fall right like that. I don't need to worry about the point there because that's the direction of the grain so I will not lose the point if I go out to the point like that. The same with this one here. But now coming down, I have to make sure I don't split down into here, so I'm going to extend the stop cut so I can come down without splitting into that vein. make sure your surface is uh, smooth, you adjust the lighting. When you adjust the lighting, more imperfections show up. So it's uh, good to move your light around so you can see all the different shadows. So that's what you're looking for, shadows, and how the shadows are breaking. And like this is too sharp a uh, line right here, so we're going to smooth that off a little bit, just a little bit of a rounding. Now when you're putting in a vein of a leaf like this, or other lines, you don't really carve lines, uh, you carve shapes. So the V-tool is really making three lines, because you're breaking the surface on the two sides, each of those creating a line, and also a line at the bottom. So it isn't just one line you're seeing, you're actually seeing three areas there. And uh, so uh, the V-tool is just the start of the cut to create a line and you need to turn that into a shape. Uh, the shape looks much better than a line. So uh, taking you around the sides down to the bottom. You can either make that shape, you know, a uh, uh, convexed or concaved, whichever way the leaf is turned. And there needs to be, this is too flat of an area here, I'm going to have to go and uh, create some more, maybe a high, higher spot here and make that leaf more defined, kind of cup it out a little bit concaved. Um, I want to get this vein here. So this hickory is carving very nice. It just you have to be a little bit careful with the splitting and it holds the detail pretty good. Now here is right at the bottom of the grain. I've got in grain coming in and this is the deepest area. So just trying to blend that in to get rid of that little low point there. Mm -hmm. 
So I've gotten rid of the flatness of this leaf. I did a little concaving raise this area and uh, now I'm going to go and clean this start. i got to rotate it again. Uh, the leaf has the basic shape uh, matched all the way around uh, but these curves are not exactly the same. So if you go and you look at the other leaf, uh, there might be, this area here might be raised, this might be concave. So it, uh, uh, it's not necessary to make them exactly alike, but the basic shape of where the tips of the leaves are and the shape of that leaf, uh, that's fairly important to get the balance. So I did, uh, when we traced all that on, the outside of the design followed very well. The basic shapes of the top are all matched up, but these little curves in and out are different for each leaf. One thing with the uh, working on architectural carving, the turned portion of this here newel post hasn't got any tool marks. So we want to leave some tool marks to show that this was hand done, but uh, leaving a lot of tool marks, every chisel mark uh, in there would really look like it's a different piece that it doesn't match with the rest of this that it was inserted. So uh, to get rid of the tool marks, <clears throat> one of the easiest methods that I found was scraping. And you can just get regular putty knife and uh, scrape or grind the putty knife to any shape on the end. Like this here is to get in down inside here. To get into the corners. Uh, nice radius uh, here to get into some of the smaller radiuses to get into some of the large radiuses and up against the corner. So the scrape in a corner like this. Scraping works much better than sandpaper. Uh, it's actually cutting the wood off and uh, in it's much faster. Uh, but sandpaper kind of rides over the imperfections and it just doesn't, uh, it rounds them off, but it doesn't level them. So if you've got a hump that, as you're sanding and sanding the whole surface, where a scraper you can pinpoint it right on a hump and take the hump right out. To demonstrate the value of a scraper, you see there's tool marks left here. Now the chisel I can spend some more time and smooth that off a little bit more but it's still not going to be perfect. So if I take a scraper and I just scrape and I'm removing wood, I'm cutting the wood off, but you see how quickly that just levels that whole area down. It works faster than sandpaper and you can pinpoint it in areas where you need to remove more stock, but it's just a much faster way to uh, prepare the wood for finishing. Now sharpening the scraper, it sharpened it's perpendicular on the end. So you're going to have a 90 degree corner on both sides. And what I do is uh, I grind that to where it's flat and then I will buff the sides, or I'm sorry, I don't buff, I grind the sides with a fine grinder. So I'm creating as sharp of a uh, 90 degree angle as I can. And that's what's doing the cutting. So like in this area here, you see each cut I'm removing a fair amount of stock. So that 90 degree angle is doing a nice cut.
my hand was kind of in the way there, um, to where you can see as I'm dragging it over, there is actually chips coming off. So that 90 degree is really taking off a fair amount of stock each time I pull it across. This is what I do, I go over the whole surface like this so it will match the turn portion pretty well. I don't want to remove all the tool marks, I want to show some chisel marks left in there um, just to show the skill of the carver but not enough tool marks to where it looks like it doesn't belong with the turn piece. So here's the finished product. We're uh, ready to put some finish on it. And here is the finished product on the top.